being bored playing, playing video games. Playing video games and talking to my friends on my phone. That was quarantine, but really fun playing video games. It's boring and feels like I've been locked up in a jail cell. When quarantine's done, what's the first thing you, you guys will do? Take off my mask and play video games. I want to do the same thing. Me too. Hey, did you know we had a, a YouTube channel? We have a YouTube channel? Yes. I kind of miss Bible study. Yeah, wait, when's the next Bible study? Right now. Wait, what? Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to the Word of Life Junior First Bible Study. We're so excited to bring forth the Word of the Lord today. And I know y'all been kicking back, getting sidetracked with other things, but today we want to use the Word of God like a flesh hook to bring you back into the will of God and the, and the direction where God wants us to go. That's why we hear Bible study. So I'm so excited to bring forth the Word of the Lord today. Today we're going to talk about the what? The who and the why. Okay, we're going to introduce the what. Here we find, if you can turn your Bibles to the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 7. We find Jesus talking to his disciples and they had asked them, show us the signs of the, th of the times when things uh, are going to happen at the end time. So Jesus told them in verse 7, nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. Now, the word pestilence means plagues, okay? And plagues equal to viruses that are deadly, okay? So what's the what that we're going to talk about? The coronavirus, okay? I had seen this picture, and I wanted, I wanted to talk about it because it mean, it's really tells us what's really going on. A lot of people are paranoid about the coronavirus. So they're looking for the answer in a vaccine that'll stop this deadly uh, sickness. So here we have a picture of people lined up looking for the vaccine to stop this deadly disease, okay? And here, I, you look over to the picture and we have a booth where Jesus saves and there's only one person in line. Okay, that kind of uh, uh, expresses where we, we're at in our times because people are paranoid about a virus they can't see, but they don't know that there's a God that they can't see that can save them from this coronavirus, okay? So I, I, I thought it was so appealing to what we're dealing with today because people are kind of stuck on the coronavirus. But I want to talk, to, that's the what, okay? And... Uh, uh, what we've, we've done today is we actually gave so much attention to this virus that we made this virus king. And the reason we made him king is because we're so afraid. And it, the reason it's king, because I've never in my time seen anybody pay attention to so much attention to just one thing where it's had the whole world bow down and actually brought uh, to their attention. So the what is the coronavirus? So I'm gonna put it up here. Hope I spell it right. Coronavirus. Okay, that's the what. Okay, so what I wanna ask you next is the who. Where did this come from? Who sent it? Who's responsible for all this? Now we get our answers in the Bible and the Bible might be to you an old book, but the answers are right there because God sees the beginning to the end, okay? So the next, we're going to find out who the who is, okay? In the book of Exodus chapter 12, verse 12, it says, For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and I will smite the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. Against the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment, okay? And he said, I am the Lord. The blood shall be to you for a token upon the house where you are. And when the, you see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the Egyptians, okay? So the Bible here is telling us 
that it's the Lord that will execute the judgment. He says, I am the Lord. So who's the who? In the book of Exodus, it's the Lord. Okay? The who is the Lord. Now I'm going I'm to break it down just a little bit more to you here. Okay? So what were the plagues? There was 10 plagues in Egypt. Okay? The first plague that was sent was the blood. The water was turned into blood. The second plague, there were frogs. Now, these are just a little bit of frogs. There's a lot of frogs going on. After that, they were attacked. Number three was lice. Number four, swarms of flies. Number five, there was deadly diseases that were killing the animals. Number six, boils in their skin. Number seven, it began to rain hail and fire. And then uh, number eight, locusts started eating up everything. Then uh, number nine was three nights of darkness. And number 10 was uh, the death angel that came in, okay? Now the scripture tells us very clearly, the Lord said that when I go, I'm gonna pass through, okay? It was the Lord himself. So in the 10 plagues, in the time of Moses, we find out that it is the Lord, okay? In, uh, see, in the book of Revelations, chapter 16, verse 1, the Bible says, And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways, and I will pour out my vials of wrath of the, of the wrath of God upon the earth. Now, this is talking about the seven plagues in the book of Revelations that at the end times, there's going to be uh, uh, vials or, or, or bowls poured out by the angels of the Lord. Now, what were those, those plagues? Oops. <laughs> the seven plagues were executed by the angels of the Lord. The first one, it says that there's going to be sores. The second plague is going to be uh, the blood, the seas turning into blood. The third plague is going to be the fresh waters like the rivers and, and waterfalls in the land. They're going to be turned into blood. Number four, the sun is going to scorch their body. Number five, darkness, just like in Egypt, is going to hit the world. Number six would be the Euphrates River is going to dry up. It's going to be dried up, a whole river. And then number seven talks about a great earthquake and all kinds of madness going on at that time, okay? So, uh, so the who sent it was the Lord. Okay, why did God send it? That's the reason why. And I want to talk to you about the great change that was going on in Egypt and in the book of Revelations, okay? Usually I do a timeline, and I kind of forgot to start it, but I'm gonna do it right now. And I love to use this, this timeline of the Bible so you'll know uh, where you're at in the Bible. The beginning was Adam and Eve, and then you got the story of Abraham right here. and how he made the promise to Abraham. Then you got the life of Moses, which God sent to his son. And then uh, this was approximately 2,000 years. You guys all know how I do this from this time right here. And then 2,000 years later, uh, we find the cross, okay? That's where Jesus came in. And then here we have the church age for another 2,000 years. So, oops. so we got a total of 6,000 years and we have the seven years of tribulation. I'll just uh, trim it to you. Okay. And then the seven plagues, then the 1,000 years of Jesus. Okay, I have to do the timeline so you guys will remember where we're at. So here we have Moses. We have the 10 plagues in the time of Moses. I think I spelled it right. And then 
That's the time of Moses. And then the seven year, seven years is the seven plagues. Okay, that way we know where we're in the Bible. Okay, so then we got the coronavirus. Right here, basically right here about this time. Okay, I just wanted to show you that. So the reason the coronavirus uh, is uh, such an important thing to us right now is because there's a reason why these things happen. Why did he why did he do it back in the Egypt times in Pharaoh's day? Why did he why did he uh, um, uh, send these plagues? Because Pharaoh's heart would not let the people of God go. So there was something going on. There was a change, a transformation that was going on. They were in bondage and they were going to be free. So God sent 10 plagues to soften the heart of, of Pharaoh. And these plagues still, even though they were being poured out, Pharaoh's heart just got harder and harder. Even to the point where he let the people go, Pharaoh still got mad and still chased them down. Uh, the, uh, the Red Sea and the Red Sea ended up capturing them and, and killing them because he still hardened his heart at the very end. So when he sent these plagues, it was a, it was a call for change from slavery to freedom. Now we go to the to the seven the seven uh, plagues in the Book of Revelation. What is what's going on there? There's a transformation and there's a change. What is that change from man ruling the world today? Uh, however they want to rule to now Jesus Christ coming to the world and take your rule himself for all this time Jesus Jesus right here in the seventh uh, after the tribulation God begins to rule for a thousand years and these thousand years we're actually going to get to see Jesus so what's happening with the plagues here and there's a change it's a transformation that's going on so what's going on we we already know that what the what is, we already know who sent it and why Why is it? Is God is calling us to a place where we can have change, okay? Some of us are so comfortable with the life we live. We go to school, we, we, we play our video games, we have our little routine, and sometimes we just need to get, God needs to get our, get, get our attention so we can get, get this right, okay? What, what, what is God's intention for us to change? He wants us to change our hearts towards him. Sometimes our hearts are in other things and he needs to get our attention so he can turn us around and we can go back to God. So what happens at the end is we turn and make him king, okay? Even though the coronavirus is, is king right now and everybody's giving it respect and everybody's paying attention to that, Jesus Christ is always going to be King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So when he sees pestilence and plagues, he says, that's what I use to get people's attention, to let them know that I am God and I am King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So he wants to wake us all up, amen, to all this coronavirus problem. Sometimes we're scared if we're going to, uh, how we're going to eat our food, if we're ever going to be able to get back to normal. But let me tell you, the normal is living for Jesus. So get your hearts right. Get your lives right. If you're at home, find a place to pray. Find a place to consecrate yourself and say, give yourself to God and let the change happen in you. And all God wants you to do is to repent. He wants the world to repent. He wants everybody to repent. And turn. what is repentance? Basically just go and turn to God. So find your, yourself in a good place and turn to God. Pray and ask God to be in your life. And no matter what goes on around you, you're going to know that he's king of kings and he's Lord of lords. And everything, God is in control. So the what is the coronavirus? The who is the Lord sent it? And the why is because God is calling for a change. God bless you. We want to uh, do a shout out to those of you that haven't heard the word of God in a long time. He said, I know God's dealing with you. So God bless you. And uh, God's calling you guys to get right with God. He's calling all of us. In Jesus' name, God bless you. All right, challenge of the week. 
What we want you to do as a challenge, we want you to draw yourself as a successful person. So the best drawing is gonna be selected and we want you to text it, take a picture of it and text it to us and we will select it uh, in the coming, coming weeks to come. Also, uh, I'm going to show you a quick example of a picture of me successful, okay? Now, I'm not a professional drawer, but you're going you're gonna to like this. Hold on one second. All right, there it is. My drawing of myself. I am a superhero standing on the Bible, standing on God's promises. That's the picture of my success. So I challenge you to bring your drawing and make yourself successful. Uh, we, uh, and again, we want you to press like on that. We want you to subscribe, subscribe, and share it. Okay, God bless you. We'll see you next week.